uh, Thursday and it will be in the morning. So um, it will be uh, from nine to 12. But of course, uh, you have to be in the Google Meet at 8.30 and you need to stay on until uh, 12, basically, or until everyone pass up. And since we only uh, have three students, only three of you, so I bet we could finish it much earlier, maybe depend on how fast all of you submit. So even though the exam is until 12, to, uh, 12 only, there is an allowance of 30 minutes for you to submit your work, but make sure you do not submit after 12.30, yeah, after 12.30, because that will incur you immediately 10 marks deduction and also the status of late submission and um, a bit hassle when that happens, yeah. So um, that is the only information I have so far. The exam will be on the 6th of May, which is um, exactly, today's the 6th, is it? Yeah, exactly a month from today, yeah? So you have plenty of time to do your revision. We only have seven chapters. You guys have finished all the chapters, right? Yesterday, we finished all the chapters in this subject. So, um, the other two weeks that we still have for lectures, we're going to discuss past year exam question. So that's the latest news. There's some uh, extra information that I need to brief all of you regarding with the exam. But that one, I think uh, I will inform you guys on week 14, um, sort of like a pre-exam briefing, yeah, the what to do and what not to do during exam. So that one I will inform on week 14. So now I just inform you the date and the time. So confirm already, yeah? You all should uh, be get, you should have the email already. I understand it was uh, distributed to students since 2nd of April. So um, if there is nothing else, let's discuss this one. Yeah, so this is about um, median regional incomes for men uh, age 21 years and above in full-time employment, the median income, you can see that's your X, and average regional house purchase price for a particular year for 12 major regions of the United Kingdom. And the median income, as stated here, that would definitely be the X and the house purchase price is your Y. Now remember whenever what I see in the uh, exam format question, whenever they give you a table, the first one is normally the X, yeah? So, I mean, that's your independent variable and the second one would normally be your uh, dependent variable. So in this question, we want to calculate the product moment correlation coefficient. So first of all, uh, it's quite big data. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve data altogether. So this kind of question um, is suitable as an assignment, but as an exam, it's not. Uh, because um, it's too many, too many N. Your N is 12. So don't worry about it. You will not get something as many as this. Um, but I cannot guarantee as well to what I uh, understood is that um, when we are asked to set exam question, we're not encouraged to have too many of the N because it would definitely take a lot of students' time, isn't it? And that is not... Um, a purpose, um, how do you say, uh, it's not fulfilling the purpose of, you know, testing the syllabus, yeah? So in order to calculate the product moment correlation coefficient, all the values, first of all, I hope you did manage to get, do check, yeah? Uh, all the values of the X times Y, and the total is 7,449. The 
x squared, that means each of the value of the x, you squared it. So you should get all these values. So when you total it, it should be 36,303, 313. And the summation of y squared, Oh, sorry. Yeah, the summation of y squared, that means each of the y you squared it, and the total is 1,561, together with the summation of x, 659, and summation of y is 135. So um, all this, you just, did you all get the same answer? No, yeah. You yeah. did? Okay, uh, so... Yeah. So when you put it into the formula, yeah, um, this is the formula and put the correct values, do check 12 times 7,449 minus with summation of X and summation of Y, yeah, 659 and 135. And when you calculate this, especially the denominator part, you should get 0 0.4891. So, um, Kelvin, is it okay? Noel, did you get the same answer? Okay. Hmm? Oh, that's a minor mistake. Okay. Oh, which one is your minor mistake? Uh, I write uh, uh, 665 and 135 for the first two. My handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kelvin. I okay. So, oh, so be yeah. careful about that. Yeah. Make sure you write the correct figure so that you will not make careless mistake. Yeah. And again, um, just to highlight in terms of the marking scheme, all these values must be uh, shown. I mean, if you did not show it, make sure you have the correct figure of the summation of x, y, summation, uh, summation of x squared, summation, summation of y squared. All these values here must be correct if you didn't show the table. Yeah. Um, of course, if you show the table, it must be correct as well. Then when you put it into the formula, you should get the correct answer. And of course, here is the comment. I can't remember the question. Let me go back and check out the question. It did, did it say to interpret? That's why I remember reading the question just now. The question didn't ask us to interpret. It just asked us to calculate the product moment correlation coefficient. Uh, in exam, if the question didn't ask you to give your comment or interpretation, there is no need to put this comment, yeah? So, um, if, of course, if the question did state you must write your comment, of course, you must write it down. And here we got our R equals to 0 0.4891. This is what we considered as a moderate degree of positive linear correlation between the median income and the house purchase price. As the median income increase, the house purchase price also increase. But it's a, just a moderate positive uh, correlation, yeah? not very high kind of a correlation. So this is uh, how you should comment. Uh, but of course, in this particular question, it was not stated to comment. So in exam, same thing. If the question didn't ask you to comment, no need, okay? But if the question did ask you to give interpretation and give your comment, then it is necessary. Okay, yeah. Any question on this, on this particular tutorial question? No, no. No. Okay, then we go on to question number six. Yeah, um, question number six is concerning with uh, the Spearman. Um, and this question, you have the region A to H, 
because this shows the actual sales of the company in each of the eight regions of a country, together with the forecast sales by two different methods. So forecast one and forecast two of two different methods. That means method number one and method number two. And the first value here, actual sales is your X and the forecast one and forecast two are your Y. So here um, we are to calculate the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient between actual sales and forecast one and secondly, actual sales and forecast two. So that means this is your X, your Y, and then another one, your X, same thing, actual sales and forecast two. And from here, um, the answers that you get from the Spearman's, we are to give our recommendation, uh, which forecasting method is better, yeah? Uh, see, you have forecast one and forecast two, two different methods. So here, what we need to do is to have the sales X and of which um, both the method, method one for forecast one and method two for forecast two, uh, we, we use the same X. You can see 15, 19, 30, 15, 19, 30, same thing, yeah? And therefore, the ranking is the same, but of course, the forecast one with that value, forecast two with that value, you have to do the ranking. And the ranking for the forecast one, which we label as RY as well, you will see that the first one is 10. That's number one. That's the smallest, followed by 13, and then 15, and then 23, and so forth. Yeah. And once you got that, the Rx and the Ry, you minus them to get your D. So 3 minus 2, you get 1. 5 minus 5, you get 0. 7 minus 4, you get 3, and so forth. And all this, you need to get the D squared. And that is the values. And of course, this, if you total, you get 40. Do the same thing yeah, for the forecast 2. But here, because we already got the value of d squared, which is 40, we put it into the formula. So 6 times 40 divided by here, 8 to the power of 2 is 64 minus 1, uh, basically 63 times 8, and divide them, and 1 minus all the value here, you should get 0 0.5238. Did you get the same answer? Oh, I didn't try. I was stuck at three. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> you didn't do question six, is it? I was stuck at three. I don't know where I go wrong. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So uh, this one is, um, you just have to compare between two forecasts, yeah? So when we did, when we when you do this, you see when you do the forecast one, you get 0 0.5238 as the uh, Spearman correlation value. And for forecast two, we also do the ranking. And what you see here, you can see there are values which are the same, which is the 19. And that is why when you do the ranking, number one is here for the value 14, next is 16, and then the next value should be 19, but you can see there are two values of 19. So 3 plus 4 um, is basically 7. And when you divide by 2, you get 3.5. And that is why the next ranking immediately go to number 5, 6, 7, and 8. Yeah. So once you got the Rx, the Rx you already obtained earlier, the Ry obtained here, you just have to subtract to get the D. And hence, uh, find the d squared and find the total. So, um, Noel, did you manage to get the total? Uh, I do the question two. Not really. Oh dear. So here you should get thirteen point five. When you put it into the formula, you should get zero point eight three nine three. Now this tells us that. Um, 
yeah, between the two, we have 0 0.8393, which is higher. So therefore, we can conclude, yeah, by using the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, the R2 is greater than the R1. Yeah, this is the R2, the second forecast. This is the R1, the first forecast. And you, therefore, you can say we recommend forecast two better for next year. Why? Because it shows a better correlation, a higher positive correlation between the sales and the method uh, two. So that's how you can make comparison between two data. And this kind of question where you need to do comparison between two different uh, method is becoming quite popular in the exam. Yeah, but um, we'll see whether it will come out in your finals for this particular type of question. Uh, Miss Focus yes. is like a prediction, right? Um, in this case, um, it's more on the method use, yeah? Meaning, uh, if you read the question, uh, of course, correct forecast means prediction. But if you look here, oops, too fast. Uh, based on this question, it's um, based on two methods. That means forecast one is by using uh, the first method and forecast two is using a different method, a second method. That oh. is. But of course, the forecast here is prediction. I mean, when you use method one, these are the forecasts that you get for each of the regions. Yeah. When you use method two, these are the forecasts that you expected for, well, using method number two. Yeah. But you are correct, Noel. Forecast means predicting the future. Because before this, I don't have to uh, recommend the lower one to like the, just to be safe. And that... Oh, you mean the lower value from the calculation uh, yeah. of the Spearman? Uh, yeah, I don't think that. No, but, uh, it's not always the lower one. Uh, in this case, because we want to see uh, what is a good uh, correlation for sales with the method. And as you can see, sales and the method focus one the method uh, of sales and the forecast one, method one, gives only 0 0.5238. But when we compare sales and forecast two, method number two, it gives us 0 0.8393, which is a higher value. So from there, we know both are positive, right? So we know that the, the higher uh, value of the Spearman correlation is a better method because it gives a better correlation between sales and the method. Okay. Yes. Any Hi. question? Hi. Okay, good. Clear. Okay. So if there is no question on this, I think we have solved this question. We go on to the next or the last question for today, which is the uh, question seven. And basically it's almost the same, yeah. Um, but, well, it's just, we want to see um, between panel members one and panels number members number two, and there are 10 candidates, yeah, I think, yeah, 10 candidates for the administrative pause. And these two panels, they are the interviewing panel, yeah? Uh, what is asked us to do is to calculate Spearman's rank correlation coefficient and to discuss whether it represents the measure of agreement between the two panel members. And as you can see here, remember, yeah, the, the first one is your X, second one is your Y. Uh, in this case, it's very hard to determine which one is the independent variable and which one is the dependent variable. It's just that we want to be able to, to see how, how strong is the correlation. Yeah. So by doing the Spearman, we're doing the ranking, but as you can see, the data has already been ranked. Yeah. 
duly rank already. So we don't have to do any uh, ranking because you can see the number is already from number one to number 10. So you just have to immediately calculate the value of the D. Yeah. So here we got the D and the D squared. And of course, the total of the D squared. I hope the two of you know how to get the D and the D squared and the total is 48. Yeah. And from here, put it into the formula. And that's how you get 0 0.7091, which is very easy to calculate. By now, you should know how to calculate it already. But what is important is the comment, yeah? Um, because our answer is 0 0.7091, this tells us that it's not very high. It is only a moderate positive correlation between panel number one and the panel number two, the interviewing. And in terms of the measure of agreement, it's basically a moderate positive correlation only, not a very, very high one. So between the panel one, I mean, they are the panel for interviewer and the panel two, another panel for interviewer, the, the correlation between the two panels is still positive, which is okay, but it's not very high. It's only moderately positive correlation. And that is how uh, we use Pierman to derive to our conclusion. Any question, guys? This question kind of tricky as well, because yeah, I thought the ABC is the X at first. Oh, I see. Okay, let me go and check out the question again. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Uh, but then again, if you thought that the ABC is the X, but then, Noel, there is, it's very difficult to do the ranking because it's not numeric, isn't it? So, um, of course, because you see in this question, they want to discuss whether the measure of agreement between the two panels. So it must be one is an X, the other is the Y. But that's a good point you raise up there just now. Yeah? So is that clear? Any question on this particular um, example, tutorial question? Uh, okay. All right. So, um, yeah, that's it. So we still have plenty of time, class. So what do you want to do now? Would you like to do this question? I like this extra example because um, we are to find the least square regression equation. It's shorter. This is a sample of exam question, okay? So uh, it's shorter data, find the least square regression equation. I think you know what you need to do here. And then calculate the product moment correlation coefficient and interpret the result. And after that, you do the Spearman so we still have a lot of time class can you solve this try it out yeah and i'll give you until what time how long do you need to complete this uh, maybe 15 minutes 15 minutes all the questions can uh, yeah. <laughs> okay try i'll give you 15 minutes i'll check on you again at somewhere around 145 yeah try it out because i want you to do the question first and then we check the answer whether you got the same answer as what i do as well all right kelvin can or not kelvin okay okay do the question doesn't take so much of your time and when you guys finish we can go off for the day lah. and i will post the pass here for us to discuss for next week But um, 
it is advisable to lay the drum instead.
to open books. So students, you make sure that you know where to get the formula, of course. And um, the key word to know that it is, uh, you have to use this formula is to find your correlation coefficient and you know this is the formula that you have to use. It is a span, yeah, it is, this is the formula. It is long, there is no shortcut. Um, I don't know whether, because I myself, I've never used the calculator to calculate a correlation coefficient. Um, I know it's there, but I never check out from the manual how to calculate it. Uh, because um, for this subject here, you need to show the working, right? So that is why I never bothered to, to check from the calculator, but it is possible. And if you got the time to, to check how to use the calculator to calculate correlation coefficient, it would be good because uh, you'll be able to check your answer whether it's correct or not. But by just doing the manual one, like what you see here, uh, finding all the total of x, y, x, y, x squared and y squared, and put all the values into the formula, you will be able to calculate it correctly um, without any <laughs> carelessness, lah, of course. And once you get the answer, then you, you write this comment. And like I said, the comment is based on the answer and from the table that I've shown to you earlier. Yeah? Okay. Any other question from anyone?
we arrange example is that three p squared get the total of it and once you get the total of it then you put it into okay? so you look at x would give us five minus this is the formula. So just Put summation d squared, you should get 0 0.75.
455. And of course, the comment is the Spearman's coefficient of rank correlation for the data is 0 0.7 for fast R1. Okay, so um, Kelvin, are you done also? Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, discuss the answer. Um, what did you get for your total of X? This one is quite straightforward. You just have to add all the X and add all the Y, uh, and then you need to find X squared x times y, y squared as well. Same process, yeah? So you should get all these values. Do check. Did you get the same? Uh, yeah. huh? one, not 139. Hmm? What 139? Oh, x. Oh. And then the total would be here. So, oh. Uh, oh, this is what you meant, 139, yeah, Kelvin? Uh, summation of x is 139. Summation of y is 400. Uh, x squared is 3,383. The x times y is 9,491. And summation of y squared is 27,018. And all these values you put into the formula for b first, of which when you put it here, what answer did you get, guys? Uh, 1.377. Yes, correct. Very good. So 1.378, uh, of course, this is the value of B, which we need to put it in here as well. So when you put it here, uh, make sure you put all the correct values according to the formula. And your A should be 34.743. And therefore, uh, once you've calculated this, do not forget to write this final equation. And of course, uh, there's something missing here, uh, which is the hat. Better I take the black pen. Which is that. And that indicates it's an estimation of. Um, this re, uh, formula, mathematical equation of regression analysis. And um, this is our equation, therefore, the mathematical equation. Uh, and that's it. That's how you answer. Uh, and uh, let me go back to the question. It's stated here just to find the least square regression equation of quality rating score on price. And you can see it's seven marks here, class. It's seven marks. It's not a small amount of marks. Do expect the same case in the exam. And just to share with all of you, yeah, uh, normally uh, calculating each one of these, yeah, these two will give you one mark. Here is one mark only. Here is also one mark one mark, that would be four marks, yeah? And, well, you have four marks here already, so one mark here, one mark here, and another one mark here. And a lot of students forget to write this, yeah? They forgotten to write this, and they lose the one mark, so instead of getting seven marks, they get six marks only. So do not forget to write the um, mathematical equation. Okay, so that answers the first part. The next part is to calculate 
the correlation coefficient. Since you already calculate all the values, you just have to put it into this formula and you should get 0 0.9379. And this question, you are required to give an interpretation. So we say, because our answer that we obtain is 0 0.9379. So this is considered as a very high positive linear correlation between price and quality rating score. And it is advisable to write as the price increases, the quality rating score would also increase because it's a positive linear correlation. So you know when your X increase, your Y would also increase in this case. Yeah, any question? No. And then the next part of the question, uh, well, well, let me go back and check out the question again. Oops. It's five marks, right? And then the spearman is seven marks. So if for part B, just to give you a guideline how it will be marked. Yeah, this is normally three marks. Here would be three marks. And the interpretation here would be two marks. Yeah. And then uh the last question is asking you to do Spearman, seven marks. So of course we need to do the ranking, which you should get the Rx, Ry, and the D squared. And then the total of the D squared is 3.5. Just put it into the formula and we get 0 0.9, which is, yeah, that's it. The question didn't ask us to do interpretation. Let me again check the question. Yeah, just to calculate, yeah, and seven marks for that. So just to show, this marks is very, very generous, okay? Seven marks. So normally it's one mark, another one mark here, and one mark here, and seven marks. It's too generous, yeah, this, this marks. So this one is basically three marks. But normally I see it's only about two marks here and three marks here. Most marking scheme, I see it in that sense. But in this case, because it's seven marks, so I would say it's three marks. Here. Yeah, so that's it. Um, any question about the chapter seven? Anything you want to raise up? Anybody? Uh, no. How, what do you think of chapter seven? This chapter? Huh? Chapter it's seven. Very easy. Huh? Uh, easy compared to the, the one by normal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. This, this chapter is much, much easier. And it's normally is a uh, question, question number four. Yeah. So what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to send you the past year using a uh, WhatsApp. Yeah. Better I upload it in the Google Classroom. Yeah. Yeah. I will upload a uh, one past year. So focus on that. And please do the question as part of your revision. And we'll discuss it in the next uh, lecture that is on Monday. Um, yeah, you, we still have time about half an hour. You can start doing it. So let me uh, start by posting it first. Yeah, hold on.
Um, plus, I thought I haven't shared with you the past year, but apparently you have the past year already, right? Yeah. So let us do the, the latest one, which is the 28th of April. Hang on. Um, let me share the screen. Because when I check, you do have the 28th April 2020. I think that's the latest exam that we have for this subject. So have you started doing this question? Class? Um, no. You haven't started. So you see it's all. Oh, it's not three hours class. Look at that. You have four hours. So long. Is it correct? Four hours? I never knew it's four hours. I always knew it as three hours. I better double confirm if it's four hours. Yeah. If not, I might give you shorter hours. That's bad. <laughs> okay, I'll confirm with you guys. Four hours is good. I think it's too long though. Um, but it is a degree paper. So it should be four hours. So anyhow, um, you can see from question one, which is supposed to be from chapter one and two, um, you can see that there's no graph required of you to do. And look at the question. It's like, you can do this, guys. So next class, I will focus only on this. Um, what date is it? 28th April, 2020. So do this question uh, and we'll discuss it in, in class next week. Like the first question is mainly chapter two about, uh, you know, calculating the mode, mean, median. And I think it's good we discuss it so that uh, you know what is your my expectation based on the marking scheme in order to get the full marks for each of this question. Yeah, class. Um, same thing here. This is uh, chapter four, Poisson distribution. Uh, and then question two is focusing on the probability tree together with uh, finding the probability values using, I think, conditional probability. Um, I'm not sure whether it's using Bayes, but it might be. Once uh, you start drawing the probability tree, you would be able to identify that. Uh, question part B is a binomial, is it? Um, yeah, it is a binomial because it has a percentage value. How about question C class? Do you know what question, what topic is it? Is a normal distribution exactly yeah uh, but uh, there is a part whereby they give you the probability value and you need to find the value of the k meaning we don't know what is the value of the x yeah uh, and then question three question three we have confidence interval but we are focusing on the error yeah and we want to find what is the sample size and look at that, it's only three marks, not very high marks. And then we have a confidence interval. And then uh, this is a hypothesis already, 10% level of significance. But of course, uh, for this, uh, we have the average and standard deviation. Therefore, it is uh, concerning with the mean. Yeah. And of course, the next one is concerning with proportion. Uh, it's still a hypothesis question also. Yeah. And then uh, question four is the one last chapter, chapter seven, which is uh, here is the product moment correlation coefficient, interpret the result, um, creating the formula for this one, uh, do the prediction when your x is 10, calculate the Spearman, and the last final mark uh, question is about 
uh, arrangement which we did in the topic of probability. Yeah, so if you look at the question, you can do this class. So this is what we're going to discuss in the answers uh, next week, focusing mainly on the on the marks allocation, so that hopefully all of you will be able to score as high as possible in the final. I'm glad to see the four hours. I always thought it's three hours. So let me verify with the course coordinator. Right, so I have nothing else to cover because uh, now I need you guys to start doing this. And the next class, we're going to discuss how the answer shall be. All right, any question, anybody? Okay, uh, all question. Huh? All question. Uh, in... I didn't. I didn't get you know. What did you say? Uh, do all do all question right? Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> of course, okay. Noel. Do all question for uh for next Monday. Yeah. Okay. okay. Calvin, any question from you? No. No. Do you have any question for me? No. If none. Uh, please use this time. We are until 2.30 to start doing the question, especially this part. I would like to see you guys get this correct. And, oh yeah, I think that's all for today. I'll still be logged in until 2.30. You can start doing the question, yeah. And um, that's all, I think. If you have no question, and you wish to leave, you can also. I have no uh, problem with that. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.